thank you, uh, Mr. Bhushan, for being to speak to us. Just wanted to speak to you about the present state of arrest that have taken place, and I'm sure you've been at the forefront of the legal strategy and the battle. What sort of procedural and substantive lapses were there in the police action? Well, it seems that the uh, police, which had come to arrest and search these people, did not have even a translated copy of the FIR or uh, translated copies of the documents on the basis of which they were seeking their arrest and therefore they were unable to even show to the court what to say of the accused person as to what is the basis for this arrest or what is the basis for this search etc. So uh, this is uh, certainly a serious procedural problem. Besides, you see they, as uh, Mr. Varvara Rao's daughter has pointed out, uh, the police were asking her why doesn't she wear a sindoor, why has she married a Dalit and so on. Mother, this is absurd. How can the police coming to search somebody's uh, home start asking these kind of questions? At the moment, the higher judiciary has intervened and uh, you know, ensured that the five persons who sought to be uh, put under remand have been under house arrest on September 6th. Uh, what would, in your view, as a human rights advocate and all, be the best way forward so that the rights and personal liberties are protected and what the police said the investigation can so far continue? Well, this uh, has clearly become a malafide investigation and therefore the prayer in the petition filed by Romila Thapad and others is that there should be an independent investigation into this case because for the Pune police to firstly abandon the FIR filed originally against uh, Sambhaji Bide and Milan Dekpote and thereafter focus on the other FIR and in that FIR, start arresting and searching people who are neither named in the FIR nor had anything to do with Bhima Koregaon or with the Elgar Parishal is itself malafied. Now first, earlier they claimed that some letter had been found in the computer of one of the persons that they had arrested in June suggesting some plot to kill the Prime Minister etc. which is totally absurd. Besides, if that was the case and if this but now wanting an investigation into that uh, assassination attempt so to say then they ought to have filed a separate FIR on that and that investigation ought to have been handed over to somebody else and uh, and if they are generally just searching for uh, Maoists and as the prosecutor there said that we are looking for urban Naxals and these are all urban Naxals etc then they should re register a separate FIR on that and it is not the business of the Pune police to go and search and arrest everybody across the country on some uh, investigation on urban naxals etc. So all this clearly shows that this is a totally malafide investigation and in fact for the police to use the term urban naxal even in the court where they were seeking remand or uh, etc. itself shows the malafide because there is no such thing as an urban naxal. This word has been coined by one failed filmmaker who has been making propaganda films for this uh, government and for the Prime Minister. Uh, the, his wife recently, uh, he made uh, a film on this <laughs> Rafal deal where some film actress <laughs> does a two minute, uh, two minute explainer saying that look, I was the I was the secretary of a housing society and uh, the earlier society was unable to change locks of the buildings and I then thereafter went and bought all the locks. This is the Rafael deal. I mean these kind of propaganda films are being made by this person who has coined this term urban naxal and this term is now being used by the police etc. to swoop down and arrest on all kinds of human rights activists, lawyers and people who are clearly opposed to the present regime. This shows that this is a malafide investigation and therefore it needs to go before uh, it needs to be done by an independent agency. The higher court monitoring of this investigation would also be important because if it just goes off outside the court radar, then it's likely that there will be continued such repressive tactics being used and coercive tactics. Yes, of course. I mean, I'm sure that now that the court has taken cognizance of this, they will order some kind of independent investigation. I'm 
sure that they are not going to allow this kind of investigation to go on in this Mala Friday manner. Uh, Prashanji, the, uh, it also showcases how the, the procedural rules of seizure, raid, like you said, the warrant was in Marathi, there was one page document, there was no warrant at all, there was a one page punch document in Marathi, uh, etc., has always been violated. I mean, we talk about the BK Basu judgment again and again and again to the 1996 ruling of the Supreme Court, which had you know laid down 11 guidelines. We talked about the FIR being in the language that the accused, so-called accused could understand, etc. Uh, and yet we find repeated uh, violations of this uh, ruling, not percolating down to the police station. As a, for somebody who dedicates, you know, maybe three-fourths of, of his life to human rights law, I mean, how do you see this monitoring becoming more rigorous of higher court rulings? So there is a serious problem, very, very serious problem in the manner in which the police has been acting and behaving. Not just in the manner in which they conduct searches, searches and arrests, but the very fact of those searches and arrests. The police has no business to come and arrest people merely because they are investigating something. Unfortunately, the police has forgotten the several judgments of the Supreme Court on the guidelines for arrest. Arrest during investigation is only on three conditions. One, if you are likely to escape and they must record that he is likely to flee from justice. Two, if you are likely to tamper with evidence. There is some evidence which you can possibly tamper with and you can show that there is a likelihood that he will tamper with. And third, that uh, if you have committed a very heinous offence, and there is a likelihood that you will come to repeat those offences. But none of these conditions are present in, in the cases of these very well-known human rights activists and lawyers, etc. And yet you come and arrest them. And this has been happening repeatedly across the country that police arrest even on the registration of an FIR. This is totally illegal. D.K. Basu's guidelines about the manner of arrest, informing the lawyer, informing the next of kin, etc. All that is just flouted wantonly by the police authorities. Unfortunately, the police people have not been given any training about the rules, etc. Even handcuffing, which is not allowed, it's routinely resorted to. Kind of action that was taken on 28th. Before that, the action on the Ju in June on one batch of activists, they were apparently approached the Supreme Court also to do. Do you think in the next few months, there will be future such repressive actions by this regime and this police in the different states, coming, given the fact that many elections are coming? Yes, uh, in fact, what Arundhati Roy has written, that uh, it, these kind of raids and the accompanying uh, campaign for urban naxals marking dissenters uh, as well as human rights activists as urban naxals is an attempt not merely to divide people in this country. Earlier, of course, there was religious division being created even now. Uh, but now there is another kind of division that are you uh, pro-Maoist, anti-Maoist and so on. But apart from that, it's an attempt to divert attention of the people of this country from real terrorist threats represented by Sanatan Sanstha and these kind of very violent organizations, lynch mobs led by various right-wing Hindutva groups, etc. as well as divert attention from the failures of this government on the economic front by way of not providing jobs, by way of failure of demonetization, by way of rising prices, by way of uh, falling rupee and so many other things. So therefore it's uh, polarization as well as diversion of uh, people's uh, mind. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.